What about LSU as we transition to a roster that feels ready, Davey? Like I look at, at the quarterback situation, really good. Receiver, excellent. Offensive line, maybe the best in the SEC. Uh, running back by committee, maybe not a bell cow right now, but still a really talented group from top to bottom, even though it goes five deep. Defensively, maybe the best two defensive players in the SEC. You can make a case. If Mason Smith's 100% healthy, he's probably the best defensive tackle in the league. And then if you have Harold Perkins, and he's Friday, Harold more Perkins. advanced, he's he's a game changer. He's a complete eraser. If they can figure out the back end, they should be in good shape. So as you look at the West right now and you look at Bama and you look at LSU, which way do you lean? Well, the, the thing that you, you didn't point out yet with, with, with LSU, because I, I cut you off probably, but like – you also got three transfer quarterbacks or cornerbacks. So, yeah. what are you what are you going to get in the secondary? You know, we're so used to them being, you know, DBU or in that conversation of being DBU. Um, so, I, I kinda, I'm wondering about their back end with all the transfers that they have come in, how they are. But Harold Perkins Jr. Like, not, I, I could put together a great <laughs> tape of, of of running right at him. By the way, because that's what I would have done. I'd have ran right at him because he wasn't overly physical. He's an undersized guy. But that sucker rushing the QB, good gosh. If And listen, Forget it might it. be the number, <laughs> but if he don't give you Von, Be- Von Miller vibes, I don't know who does. I mean, he gives you the ghost <laughs> rush. He gives you the speed. Like, he plays really, really hard. And now, and he was a true freshman. Like, him a year later in the system with his body being built up. Uh, but Jaden Daniels, man, I remember watching the first game with you and Tess last year. And I remember thinking, he ain't got a clue how to play quarterback. Like, he did not know how to sit in the pocket and go through progressions and really make you pay. And you know all these weapons on the outside, all this speed. And I'm like, dude, if you would just be patient and go through it. End of the season, you started to see that. Less scrambling for life. He started to have a better feel for the game. Started to make more plays down the field. Like, if if that guy takes the next – and listen, he's second on the Heisman list as favorite. So that gives you an idea because he he had 800 yards scrambling. You know, he's going to do a lot of damage with his feet. Um, if they take that next leap, you know, at, if he takes that next leap and, and, fin- and finishes where he starts off, I think LSU would be the team in the West that I would probably be most scared of. Um, because, again, last year was the first year of building something special. Now you get to add a recruiting class on top of it. you got a ton of guys returning. I think you got some upper echelon talent that you know exactly what they are. you got a quarterback spot that's solidified. Um, I might. That's why I might lean towards LSU – over Alabama, but it's interesting to me, the most talented teams in the country, Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, all with new quarterbacks, you know, at this point, all give you a little bit of pause of where you think they'll be.